Hello, good evening, everybody. My name is Vanessa Aguayo, and I'm with the Fairfax County Department of Transportation. I am the project manager for the Richmond Highway BRT, and I'm excited you are here to join us tonight and to discuss the, these new BRT station design concepts with you. Welcome. Before we begin, I'd like to review some guidelines so everyone can participate and get the most out of this session. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the BRT website and we will share on Facebook. You are welcome to submit questions using the Q&A function on the WebEx window at any time. And we do, and we will do our best to get all of the questions while also ensuring that we get all to all the participants. We plan to answer questions about station design concepts first, and then circle back and answer other topical questions on the project. If we run out of time, our team will follow up on any unanswered questions with replies directly to attendees or by posting Q&A on the BRT webpage. Please do not use the chat feature to submit your questions. Use the Q&A function and choose to send to all panelists in the Q&A feature. If you are on the phone, please hold your questions to the end and we will have instructions on at the conclusion of the presentation. We also encourage you to participate on the online survey and submit your comments and feedback. And we'll give you a variety of ways to do that at a little bit later during this meeting. I would now like to welcome Mount Vernon District Supervisor Dan Stork to open this meeting with brief remarks. Supervisor Stork. Well, thank you, Vanessa. It's a pleasure to be here this evening and to uh, to welcome everybody to the to this BRT here um, meeting. This is a long-term project. I hope everybody has a sense that we've been spending years on this. Uh, it started back really in, in uh, 2014 with uh, the board's approval of a, of a transportation plan and ultimately with Embark, which we, the board, the board of supervisors approved in 2018. We now have a number of things that we're doing and the core of it though, you're gonna see a lot of it tonight, which is the actually the bus rapid transit uh, kind of line itself and what it looks like, but most importantly, the thing that'll be most visible to all of us are, are the stations. And uh, we've uh, had a number of conversations, a number of meetings, and put together some, um, the staff has put together some excellent designs, and we're excited to, to have them show them to you, and we're looking forward to your great comments and your uh, thoughts, and, and this is something that's going to be with us a long time, so definitely looking for you to to uh, to give us your best uh, advice, your best thinking on this, and how we can make it the kind of thing that um, our kids and our kids' kids can can truly uh, value and 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 find to be a very convenient, easy way to to get around um, our area. Um, as you know, our area is changing a lot, and it will continue to to be that way over the next decades. But the first decade, this decade, is the one that is going to get uh, bus rapid transit bit down, built down the, the middle of Richmond Highway and, and a number of stations. So, again, we need your input. We're looking forward to it. Um, if you don't have a chance to do that tonight with the staff here, I'm sure they'll give you emails or places that you can contact them. But you are always welcome to call my office or contact my office. Uh, best way to do that is probably by email, which is the Mount Vernon at fairfaxcounty.gov uh, email address, which is mtvernon at fairfaxcounty.gov. Uh, again, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, Vanessa and her team, I've got a lot to show you and we've been working on a lot, but but most importantly, we're missing your input. So hopefully you'll you'll give us that tonight and, and on into the next many nights um, that uh, you're you're going to have a chance to consider and look at this. If you don't get to see it all um, online or, or tonight, there's clearly going to be uh, presentations that they can link you to that you can go into their website anytime and take a look at it. So with that, um, again, it's a pleasure to represent you as a Mount Vernon District Supervisor. And, and more importantly, it's a pleasure to invest and see that the, the state, the county, the regional, and ultimately the federal folks are going to be investing more than a billion dollars in our transportation system along Richmond Highway. That'll have a huge impact on the revitalization that's already started. So again, look forward to hearing from you and thank you very much, Vanessa and your team for bringing this to us tonight. Thank you, absolutely. I'd also like to welcome Lead District Supervisor Rodney 
Lusk, Supervisor Lusk. Uh, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you to all that are here uh, participating in this program. I'll echo some of the same uh, comments that Supervisor Stork um, mentioned. Um, I served on the Planning Commission and uh, got the opportunity to look uh, a bit on the Invar Christian Highway uh, process and also uh, help with the implementation of it. And I'll say this is a critical transformational opportunity for the corridor. It's going to put this area on the map in a way that it's not been on the map before. So it's critical. It's important uh, that we hear from you specifically about your thoughts on the future design. Um, as Supervisor Stork indicated, this is not a um, design element or feature that is really um, the responsibility of the electeds, such as myself or he, uh, to make the decision. We've got to come to you and hear your thoughts. This is going to be in your neighborhood. This is going to be where you live. And it's going to be such an important feature along the corridor. And the designs um, that you'll be seeing tonight uh, are ones that um, we spent uh, considerable time discussing and trying to get to a place where they can be brought to you here. But we still want to hear specifically what your thoughts are, concerns, questions, because we want to make the best decision uh, for the community um, at large. So with that, I'll say um, I'm delighted to be participating here tonight. So uh, if you have any issues or concerns uh, that you'd like to bring to me specifically, um, you can reach me by phone at 703-971-6262 or uh, via email. Um, our inbox is uh, leedist at fairfaxcounty.gov. So again, thank you for participating and look forward to um, hearing your comments and your feedback and making the best decision uh, for Richmond Highway Court. And thank you, Vanessa, and all the folks um, on the staff who have been working so diligently uh, to bring this to fruition. This is a, a big undertaking and it is an important undertaking for the South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Lusk. And our next speaker is Tom Deshabney, the director of the Fairfax County Department of Transportation. Tom? Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I'm not going to take a lot of time so we can actually get to the, the details of the stations. Um, and I think you're going to be excited to see some of the things that Vanessa and the team have put together. Uh, just want to thank everybody for participating tonight and echo the um, request to both Supervisor Stork and Supervisor Lusk that we really want your feedback. Um, let us know what you think about these designs. How can they be improved? Um, what, what don't you like about them? Um, what do you like about them? So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back to you, Vanessa. Just appreciate everybody participating tonight. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. All right, so let's get into this. Um, here's a little bit about our agenda. Um, we'll go a little talk about the meeting. Um, we always want to like to do this and give a project update. So we'll tell you about our status and talk to you about what happened in October. And finally, the meat of our agenda, what we're doing here tonight is talking about station architecture. We'll take you back to our design background and process, talk about the two station concepts that we're um, getting ready to show you tonight. And finally, and one of the more important uh, really elements of these stations is just neighborhood identity, giving um, what we're calling the, the neighborhood charm to these nine stations. Um, from there, we'll talk about our next steps of the survey over, overview, uh, specifically where you can let us know um, your concerns, your questions, your comments about what you're going to see tonight, and finally open it up for a, a discussion and Q&A. So to the right, I am uh, accompanied here tonight with Laura Jeffords, who's one of our architects on our BRT team, and Matthew No. So let's get into the project updates. Uh, first off, for any of those who uh, don't know specifically where these stations might be or, or just the project over here to the map to the right. This is again a project to uh, the Richmond Highway Bus Rapid Transit. It's an effort to not only plan, design, but construct a BRT system between the Huntington Metro Rail Station and Fort Belvoir. You can see to the right, there's a total of nine potential systems that will be along the corridor. And finally, and, and we do like to um, outline this, that the VDOT does have a related project in the corridor. And you can see it here. It's between Sherwood Hall Lane to Jeff Todd Way. 
A project is known as the Richmond Highway Corridor Improvements Project, and you can see there is their email to the left um, that will link you to it. Uh, for more information specifically about the bus rapid transit project or any backgrounds or other other efforts, you can always visit our website. It's found here at the bottom at fairfaxcounty.gov. Um, in October, for some of those that were on the phone, we did have a right of way meeting. Um, it, we held a two, one on October 20th with English and then one in October 22nd, which was Spanish, to share information about the right of way acquisition process. We also gave a general project update during that time. That presentation and slideshow and video recording is found on our website. You can see the link at the bottom. Um, we wanted to briefly touch on the December meeting update. Uh, we are still planning to have a, a December meeting, but uh, we had to reschedule a couple of things. So uh, December 8th and 9th is the times for those meetings. But instead of what we're going to do is kind of bring you an end year review of what's been going on. So whether this be part of the BRT project, uh, we'll have Vita on the line to talk about the multimodal improvements project that they're working on. Um, you know, we've done a lot on the quarter. We have approved urban design guidelines and some of our sister agencies from the Department of Planning and Development will be on the line to answer any of those questions. And finally, we want to talk in, in a little bit about our active Fairfax transportation plan and some other county efforts that are, um, that are ongoing to really improve pedestrian um, uh, safety along the Richmond Highway corridor. Again, as always, if you want to know more information, participate in any of these meetings um, of this website to the right of the page, you can always go online to find more information. So let's get into a little bit of the project progress. Um, approximately right now, we are at 30% design. We have updated our row plans and those are available on our website. Um, just to, to confirm, um, back in 2019, we did bring the community for options for a, a High Bluff Valley station that had to do with the Fortson Road. Um, the option that was chosen, you can see here at the top right was option B. So again, this will mean that Fortson Road will remain open and operate as it does today as a full access signal. Um, we are uh, continuing work on our, env our environmental document uh, with the expected final signature around the first quarter of 2021. And finally, as always, we will continue to refine the design to reduce or minimize those impacts and uh, enhance our stormwater management design. And, and one of those features or concepts is found to the right at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we, for those who have missed it, uh, we have had a change in our BRT project schedule. Uh, just as a reminder, the original schedule uh, was put out by the Department of Rail and Public Transportation as, their, as part of their 2015 multimodal study. Um, since then, uh, as you all know, we've been working on additional uh, project work, survey, et cetera. And, and, and really over the summer, uh, once we've had all this information, we really got a, deep, a deeper dive into the schedule and the, um, the list to the left, you can see is some of the reasons that we'd have to uh, change the schedule. One is uh, the construction that's been coordinated uh, with the VDOT uh, route one widening uh, has been extended. So we've had to make changes. Um, revised construction sequencing for a project. So that means is, you know, sometimes we can't start one thing without having the next thing um, finish. And so overall, uh, we found that we can't overlap some of those things. Uh, a federally mandated environmental process, and this is just uh, in NEPA or in our Environmental Policy Act, is the first stage to kind of get this project going. Um, some of those processes as we're going through with a review of the environmental process has taken, um, has taken a little longer. Um, right of way acquisition, uh, relocation complexities, and as you all know, an extensive utility relocation. And finally, we, we have been doing design changes as we've been going through the project. And again, this is to minimize those impacts um, and that have ca caused overall um, some schedule extensions. So what does this mean? Um, you can see to the bottom, this is the new schedule that we're going with. Um, it does anticipate the BRT revenue service to start in 2030. Um, before we can get there, a right of way acquisition must be completed prior to the start of the roadway construction. And I think the more exciting thing here is that the first active construction that we'll all be able to see is uh, for overhead and utility relocation will be in early 2023. 
So for more details or more specifics on any of, of these uh, updates that I have just given, again, you can go to our uh, website in um, September 2020. We did we do have another updated presentation that go, does a little deeper dive into this information. Um, you can view it here on this link above or go to directly to our, our YouTube channel. And we do also have a September 2020 newsletter available that has some of this information. With that, we want to get into uh, station architecture. And before that, let's get into a little bit of the background of exactly what is the BOT station architecture. So this includes elements to not protect passengers and keep them obviously comfortable as they wait for the bus. Um, some of these stations or, or concepts have, um, they're different than you would see in a typical uh, standard bus stop. So for example, elevated platforms. Um, so you don't have you need to step up. So that means, you know, there's no time or we save the time for the bus kneeling down. We have a longer station area and canopy, a, a more protective design um, due to uh, us being in the center of the roadway. Um, there will be fair machines so you can pay before getting on the bus of live messaging screens that tell you the next bus arrival as you're waiting. And finally, enhanced lighting and seating, which again are some of the elements that we're going to introduce to you. So let's talk a little bit about our process overview of how we got here today. Um, so we'll go through this in the next slide, but it's really looking back and looking at some of the resources that are found along the corridor, brainstorm of these potential themes that we'll talk more about, um, go into some of this defining um, refinement that actually we shared with you back in our September 2019 public meeting. You can see where we are here. We're ready to share these designs with you, develop and continue to refine them. Our next step will be to select the preferred design concept based on the comments and the input and the survey that we'll gather um, within these next couple of months. And we ex hopefully expect to come back to you um, at some time in spring of 2021 to talk about what we found. And I think with that, I'm gonna give it to Laura to talk a little bit more about the context resources. Did we lose Laura? Oh, that works. Um, <laughs> I just uh, I was saying that most of you have seen these images before. They are part of our presentation that we showed to the community and the committee uh, in September. And they describe the process that architects go through in order to come up with the inspiration for their designs. Um, we've started our process by going up and down the corridor from Huntington Metro to Fort Belvoir and finding context resources, whether they exist today or existed in the past. We also reached out to the public and asked the folks, hey, did we miss anything? So we had a pretty comprehensive list and this doesn't show you everything that we actually looked at. Once, uh, next slide. Um, once we got a hold of all these resources, we, we did some research and we poked around and we tried to find even more detail that would tell us more about the surrounding architecture, the surrounding um, environment, and uh, other features that may or may not have presented themselves in the current condition. Once we uh, established all of these elements, we decided to break them down into categories. And those categories are what we moved forward to start the design of the stations. As you can see, these elements here are pretty obvious. They're old hangars, which you're probably not familiar with. But they're definitely, you know, Mount Vernon High School, the Grist Mill, um, Huntington, Huntley Park Meadows, Huntley Meadows Park, Holland Hills, et cetera, et cetera. And even Huntington Station, which some people don't see historic, but it's been around long enough that we can call it that. Uh, next slide. Um, besides the many many concepts that architects can always come up with we decided to narrow it down to three and uh, these three concepts were permit were presented in september and they are aviation and military history and ecology and corridor gateway the majority of the folks that actually saw our boards in september seemed to think that history and ecology was kind of the preferred uh direction for us to go i just thought i'd mention that um what you'll see coming up next are 
the result of our exhaustive efforts to kind of capture what's going on in the corridor. Um, and you'll see the technical application of architecture along with community input, which is related to these themes and design inspirations that we gathered from the corridor. So with that said, I'm gonna introduce Matt now. He and his team have been working on the presentation you're about to see, and we are really, really excited to hear from you about your thoughts on how far we've come so far. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm here today to share two potential design concepts for your input. Um, only one of them will be taken to the next round of design, and that station design will be used for all nine locations. Please note that these are conceptual designs, not final designs. Uh, and in future design stages, we will add and refine things like security features, landscaping, unique elements for each community, fair collection devices, branding, signage, and wayfinding elements. Both design concepts have some important things in common. For example, safety components, such as railings and protective walls, comfort elements, such as seating and windscreens and lean bars, hardscape design components, such as benches, lighting fixtures, and paving. Also, wayfinding and signage components, such as entry pylons and system maps. Both station designs are 140 feet long with an approximate canopy coverage of 70 feet. Uh, to help you visualize this, the covered platform area is nearly the length of a metro train car. Um, so now we're going to move into concept one, and concept one is inspired by aviation history and ec ecological themes. Concept one incorporates theme elements by the dynamic shape and materials resembling an airplane wing, the shape of the canopy referencing the military history of the corridor, and the way the station integrates into its site. Um, on the next slide, you will see a brief video of what Concept 1 looks like. We are now viewing the station from across the road. Here's what the station looks like when uh, passengers approach it on foot. And here is where passengers will wait for their bus. And here is what the station will look like when viewed from the other side of the road. Next slide, please. For concept one, the overarching reference is seen in the form of the station canopy. The reference to an airplane wing is a nod to the aviation history of the Richmond Highway Corridor. Over the last several months, we have been developing the structure of this design with the intent of minimizing beam and column sizes to keep in line with a light and open station. As we zoom out to look at the intersection, we see the relationship of the north and south bound stations. The wing motif is reinforced by this relationship. Much like an airplane, we have two wings. As you approach the station, a feeling of movement is invoked. The subtle tilting of the handrails, the diagonal pattern in the sloped walkway concrete, and the station wall rising out of the ground while arching overhead all draw you forward into the station. On a practical note, the stations are semi-protected from the elements by windscreens and station canopy. Also note that the platform is wide enough to provide comfortable circulation for all users. And last, we see the back of the station as viewed from the crosswalk.
Next, we're moving into concept two. Concept two incorporates the gateway and history themes by referencing peak roof structures, clean lines, simple iconic forms, bold lighting, and the resemblance to a front porch that is airy and protective. On the next slide, we'll have a short video of what concept two looks like. We are now viewing concept two from across the road. Here's what the station looks like when passengers approach it on foot. And here's where passengers will wait for the bus. And here we're seeing the station from the backside. For concept two, the overarching reference is seen in the form of the station canopy, the reference is to a simple peaked roof or welcoming front porch. The station structure is bold, resembling some of the mid-century homes in the corridor area. This view shows the relationship between north and southbound BRT stations. This design is a reference to service stations, restaurants, and motels that existed along the Richmond Highway corridor, reflecting its role as a gateway to the DMV area. A simple entryway helps to guide pedestrian flow into the station. Windscreens will provide protection from the elements and opportunities to add maps and other signage. The station platform is wide enough to accommodate comfort and circulation for all passengers. And last, we see the back of the station as viewed from the crosswalk. We want to hear your thoughts. You can let us know by participating in a short survey to tell us your input about the two design concepts. Please participate by following the link below and share this opportunity with others. Back to you, Vanessa. Thank you, Matthew. Again, we really want to just highlight how important it is and how much we do really want to hear from you and your thoughts on these two exciting concepts that we've worked, hopefully you can see really hard on to bring to you tonight. So now let's talk about station architecture in, in the reference to community identifying elements at the stations. We wanna bring some words to you tonight and what a neighborhood charm should come to mind. Though there will only be one final concept used at all nine BRT stations, there are spaces in both of these concepts that we want to incorporate history and characteristics of the neighborhood surrounding each station area. These potential community identity components are not shown currently on the two concepts, but you can see here to the right, there are some examples around the nation of other systems and other areas that have chosen to show their local charm, shall we say, at, at uh, their systems. Here, for example, are, are where we've highlighted these two, uh, or the two concepts with seven areas that we see, we feel that can bring this local charm. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit. Um, area one is the platform entryway paving design. Area two, you can see in the back throughout the station is the windscreen glass design. Um, area three is an art or interpretive wayfinding um, panel that can be found on either end of the station. Area four is highlighted in pink and it's a railing design. Oops, apologies. Um, area five, you can see off on the station, um, or intersection plazas is a type of sculpture, art, or, or another interpretive or wayfinding panel. In area six, plaza paving design. And seven along, um, along the backside is landscaping design near the stations. 
I'd like to again highlight that um, though I've zoomed in on one of the concepts, we feel that both of all of these components can be found in approximately the same locations for both station concepts. With that, we want to talk a little bit about these examples of community identity elements, and I'm going to hand it over to Laura to tell you more about that. Sure. Thanks. Uh, this first example is something that you might see on the paving area before you come into the station. On the left is something that's pretty straightforward. So it's exactly where you are. And, and it, if you look in either direction, it tells you what is in that direction. So the, the, the image on the right is a little more um, abstract, and it might tell one that their station is near a river, their station is near a fish market, or maybe even an aquarium. It's definitely something that's supposed to be hidden in plain sight that explains best what that neighborhood is about. The next uh, slide that you'll see is a back screen that we used on GRTC's station. Um, this back screen has a printed map of the entire route of the BRT system, or actually most of it, I guess, the entire route of the BRT system, which is the green line that you see on the glazing. And along that route, we tried to highlight all of the areas and all of the unique neighborhoods that the passenger goes through as they're traveling to their destination. And if you look closely, there's QR codes on the glazing. And those QR codes, once scanned with your phone, give you information about the region, about the bus stop you're at, and potentially where you're going. It's really pretty. It's a great tool for people that are using the system. The third um, image that you'll see um, is interpretive art. And believe it or not, maybe you guys know, but I'm not always sure which direction I'm traveling um, when I'm on the metro or on a bus system. And this is a very fun and unique um, way for um, the users to recognize the direction that they're, they're going in, either north or south. And then the infill is filled with mosaics and beautiful representations that the artist has interpreted best represents that neighborhood. Uh, the fourth option that we're going to show you is the railing system. Um, this is a necessity for the station, has to be on there anyway, and it, it gives us a great opportunity to express the characteristics of our surroundings and the unique features of each community. Um, we hope that uh, it's, it's just a great opportunity. We, we, uh, we're anxious to see if anybody picks this one. <laughs> the <laughs> option here is the plaza sculpture. On your right is something that a lot of people have seen. This is a, you know, it's a downtown district uh, identifier. It tells you, hey, you're in the business district, and and these are the elements, these are the the points of interest that you may want to look at while you're down here. Uh, and I think most of us have seen these before. Uh, on the left is something a little more subtle. It is a monolithic piece of architecture that is, you know, hugely uh, obvious, it, but it's. It's subtle in its meaning in, in that it represents the rail yards that were once in this location. And it uses the rail, um, the rail steel as, as the, the material for the sculpture. So it's a little more subtle, but it's a tribute to what was once there. Um, sixth image you'll see is not necessarily um, intended for the station proper, but it's something that the team is looking at to help tie in and express features of the station area. Um, now this is a little quirky. It looks almost chaotic, but who says it doesn't represent a piano or a keyboard or waves or motion? Um, and lastly is something we're working on and probably won't be quite as successful with, but um, we can all dream, uh, is the integration of landscape and stormwater management techniques within the station. This softens what's going on around you, and um, we'll try to implement features such as this in and around the areas um, that you'll be transported through. I hope that helps. Um, back to you, Vanessa. Thanks, Laura. No, that was great. Let's talk, and here, is our next slide is some of these examples or neighborhood charm that we're talking about. Again, these are just examples. We wanted to kind of bring you a picture of the possibilities that could that could 
come um, as we continue to refine and, and get your input. This by no means that um, we're proposing any of these concepts, but again, we just wanted to kind of give you what could this be with the existing station or with our proposed stations in the background. So this far left is an example of a plaza sculpture that you kind of just um, that we, we kind of just mentioned talked about maybe um, on the bottom left corner, this example of, of a windscreen glass design that would be obviously uh, towards the quarter mentioning, I don't know, maybe Holland Hills um, or Gum Springs. An example to the right, uh, a, a type of maybe platform paving design that can be found inside the station itself. Again, these are uh, not at all proposed and these are just examples to kind of highlight and give you some context as to uh, what it could be in the future. So with that, again, we just want to know, uh, tell us um, on the survey where um, you would want these elements, um, the type of identity elements that could be included at or near the station. What neighborhood features do you think should be highlighted in each station area? Please tell us on the, sur on the survey. So this is a, a, a separate question. Um, we're talking about local charm, and we understand that, you know, along this corridor, there's nine different station areas, and maybe the Penda a neighborhood is much different and pretty much should be different than the woodlawn. So this is what that's what we want to know. And for example, and I think I mentioned this right now, it's for the Penda station, right? What neighborhood characteristics, history, cultural elements would you like to see reflected in the station design? So we've given you opportunities at each of the stations of where you can find these elements. But now we're asking and we'll ask them as part of the survey is in within those elements, what would you like to see? What should we highlight? Again, um, knowing that we have nine different station areas. So let's talk a little bit about this meeting wrap up. Our next steps for stake in our, uh, station architecture will be again to summarize the input that we received at this meeting and in the survey. Um, this input will be shared with the county supervisors and others on our uh, project executive committee who will make the final decision on which concept to move forward with. As the final concept is developed, uh, we incorporate these elements of this neighborhood charm that we've been talking about. Um, we're not by all saying that this will be the only opportunity. We do envision there to be more opportunities to uh, provide your input and continue to evolve the design uh, as the design continues to move forward. So again, a reminder, if we haven't heard it, we wanna hear from you. Please fill out our survey. Uh, again, the two main questions or topics we, we want to hear about is the station concepts. Which station concept, concept did you like best? What features do you like? What would you change? Um, and the part two that's very important is our neighborhood charm elements. What would you like to see at the station neighborhood um, and station area neighborhoods reflected in the design? What community, history, cultural amenities would you like to see highlighted? at each station. And just to show you kind of uh, what the survey looks like, here's a screenshot. Again, this can be found on our, uh, at the fairfaxcounty.gov uh, BRT website. And you can see here, I promise it won't take you more than two to three minutes to go through and, and give us your input and answer these questions in, in regards to the station concepts and, and our neighborhood charm that we've been talking about tonight. Uh, so again, I just uh, we're about to open it up for questions. Uh, just a couple of reminders, please. Again, don't use please do not use the chat feature uh, or comment to ask the questions. And um, you can see here to the right. If you are joining us by phone, please push star three to raise your hand to ask the question. Um, when it is your turn, the moderator will call on you to ask the question. And, af and after you have finished, please push star three to unraise your hand. Um, again, I I'd wanna just uh, remind everybody that uh, we will be taking, if there are any questions about other topics about the project, but because we're focusing on station design tonight, um, we would like to respond to those, uh, to make sure we hit those station design questions first. And then again, um, discuss other questions as time allows. Um, again, to the left here is our contact information with three various ways. Well, actually four if you count the survey to give you comments. But again, if you go to our website, uh, verifexpenny.gov slash transportation and put in the keywords Richmond Highway BRT, it'll take you directly to our website. Our email here that gets you straight to the project team 
D-O-T-B-R-T at fairfaxcounty.gov. And finally, um, we do still take uh, uh, mail, physical mail. So comments or questions by mail um, here to the address at Fairfax County Department of Transportation, Richmond Highway BRT Project Manager of 4050 Legato Road. So with that, thank you again for your time tonight. And um, I think, right, Rashad, we're gonna open it up for questions. Yep, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look through this Q&A. And I'll let you know um, what people want to hear about. So far, we've got three questions. Um, just like what Vanessa said, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and shoot them in the Q&A chat. Um, if you guys are on the phone, star three to raise your hand. That lets us know you guys have a question um, so we can get to you guys. So first question, Vanessa, has to do with station design. Daniel wants to know, how will you protect waiting passengers from blowing wind and rain? perhaps adding some elements that are perpendicular to the back wall. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for that question. Let me, so let's go back here and, and maybe we didn't do a good enough job here, but, and, and I, I realize that sometimes the schematics are, are bad, but uh, we do have a, a flat panel and hopefully you guys can see my cursor going across here where we do anticipate to have uh, a windscreen for that reason to protect you from from that specific element. Actually, let me show Vanessa, that. There are also fins. You may want to show those in the previous design. Oh, okay. yep, yep. So you mean okay? So you coming for the red? Yep. Um, so yep, there's a flat black screen, and then you can see here um, there on um, this station concept. Um, there are those elements. Um, I was going to go here to this uh, first concept. Um, we do again have the flat back, a black screen going all across and you know the, the, the designs are different. That is something we're looking into to see where the, uh, that type of feature can be added that you see here on this um, concept to design. Thank you, Vanessa. Next question is from uh, Neil Kramer. Uh, Neil says he joined the meeting late. He'd like to know what the address is for uh, or the location is of the of the stations. So, um, and, and thank you. That's also for those of you joining the site. Great question. This meeting is being recorded. It will be found on our website within the next two days of uh, the presentation is currently on our website right now um and uh and including those videos that you all have seen and you can kind of go through at your leisure to you know really take it in i know we, we kind of went through this a little quickly um given that we wanted to have time for everyone to ask questions but all this information will be available on our website and vanessa can you also put the map up to show where the stations would be located in the corridor Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, uh, yes, so we have a total of nine. Um, Huntington Metro Station will be the farthest north. Um, that one will be a little different since it will be on the Wamata property. Um, we have, and then, so really on Richmond Highway, we start with the Penda Station. And you can kind of, um, I, I guess the cross street at Penda would be Shields. We continue down for Beacon Hill Road is Beacon Hill Road. <laughs> Uh, a Lockheed Boulevard is, is the Lockheed Cross Street. Uh, High, Ble High Bluff, sorry, Valley is Boswell. At Gum Springs, the Cross Street would be uh, Sherwood Hall Lane. Uh, as at the South County Government Center um, is, is actually a, a, a Buckman, I guess. Um, at Woodlawn, we have uh, Sacramento Drive. And in the last one, um, it will be, a, I guess, a side station on, on Belvoir Road in um, Fort Belvoir. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, next question comes from Kathy. Kathy wants to know if we will be reaching out to specific communities um, such as New Gum Springs Civic Association to ask for their input on what can be included in the station design. Uh, absolutely, we, we can. Uh, in, in fact, we do have a list of HOAs and civic associations going along the corridor. 
So I think uh, we're, we're going to send an email us. Our survey and our information is available, and uh, that, that is one way to, to kind of keep in contact and to open it up to make sure we hit all, all of the neighborhoods. Tom, I don't know if there's something else you want to add. You may want to mention the work that we're doing to set up some smaller group meetings as well. Sure. Um, we are working with both uh, Supervisor Aleska and, and Supervisor uh, Stork's office to kind of uh, bring some additional outreach to a couple of the communities or uh, locations. So whether I know uh, Supervisor Aleska's office is asking uh, for preferences of, 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 you know, doing of going to these uh, other specific communities. Um, Stork's office, uh, they're looking to host a couple of in, a smaller in-person group meetings uh, for the areas. Um, I don't know, working on dates right now, and I'm sure as soon as uh, the supervisor's offices have that confirmed, we will send those uh, details out. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, next question comes from Kathy. Kathy wants, uh, not, we just did Kathy, sorry about that. Uh, next question comes from, just got it. How are you guys there? putting lots of good questions in. I just want to make sure I get you guys in the correct order. This one comes from Jim. Um, Jim would like us to explain how pedestrians can get to and from the bus uh, from across the street, assuming that those leaving the station will need to wait for a pedestrian signal. Um, do we have enough room in a protected area for crossing? That is a great question. I am and I apologize, I'm gonna to try to go back and see if I can highlight that maybe in this one. Um, so, right, so I guess if you're on the station and you're leaving and you want to cross, we do have an, a, a wider area, a standard crosswalk is, is, is 10 feet wide. Um, and in this case, it's, it's, so it's like a 10 by 10 box, but we are looking to make that larger and knowing that we'll have a more pedestrian activity. So whether you're just trying to cross Richmond Highway or trying to, you know, get off the bus and trying to access the side streets. Um, we're working with VDOT to elongate that area. So, uh, and that has to do with some more ridership projections. So maybe um, widening the crosswalk here, uh, 12 to 15, in some cases, 18 feet to make that wider again, just to provide that additional area. But as of now, yes, um, we have again, a, a 10 by 20 at minimum box at all these locations. Um, to provide a, a queuing or, or area for pedestrians to wait until they get the, the pedestrian signal. And I think, um, and again, I apologize if this doesn't do a good enough job, but right off the screen, that would work, where would be where you'd see a, a pedestrian push button, you press it to be able to cross here to the center or, and that, or, or cross all the way across, depending. But, um, but we, yes, we do have, and again, off the screen is, is a secondary push button because we also know maybe you didn't grab onto the signal in time and you're not on the bus, you know, you're just trying to cross. Um, so we want to make sure that you can call to get that pedestrian phasing while you're in the center of the station. Thank you, Vanessa. Let's see. We had a couple follow-up comments for previous um, questions. Um, sure. Daniel wanted to clarify his question from the previous station design one um, regarding, regarding protection from the elements. Uh, he said to clarify the windscreen on the back wall can protect against east or west winds, but not against winds from other directions. Blowing snow and, freeze and freezing conditions can be hard on waiting passengers. Um, that is a good question. I, I guess um, our architects that are on the line, I'm going to um, uh, ask you to kind of help me with that one. I mean, as the bus pulls in and, and this uh, canopy you see here, I know we don't have the dimension on here, but it, you know, it, it is pretty long. Um, it'll sure. overlap where the bus pulls up. Laura, was that you trying to say something? Yeah, I, I just want to, we, there's a, a graphic of the GRTC back screen and on that GRTC back screen, you can see a perpendicular panel that goes towards the street and that is something right there uh, it's next to the the lean rail this is something that we're looking into integrating into the stations um be advised the ceiling is a little bit lower on this station type 
but we've looked at it and we continue to evaluate it uh, based on the roof angle and the distance between um, the height of the, the height of the canopy versus where you're sitting. And that is still under evaluation. Um, be advised uh, because of the size of our stations, um, our height does need to clear emergency services vehicles. Um, so we are somewhat limited um, and completely understand your concerns and are looking at integrating this type of um, feature into, into the um, structure or the concrete knee walls of the stations. I can't say they're fully developed, but we do understand your concerns and we're trying to address those. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Laura. Thank you, Vanessa. Let's see. Thank you guys for all these questions in the chat. We're just scrolling through them right now just to make sure we get all of them answered. Um, we've got um, uh, another question from Anthony. Uh, he says, I agree with the issue of weather protection. One-sided windscreen would not be enough protection. I think users of the system would desire more environmental protection over your conceptual designs. I, I guess, uh, thank more, you. Uh, more comment than a question. Just wanted yeah, to make sure. No, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. But, um, again, I, th I think to echo Laura's point, um, th that's exactly the thing we want to hear, right? Making sure that did we miss something? Is there something that's more important that um, we should make sure as we continue to refine and, and um, make these better, frankly, concepts, um, make sure we don't miss those. So um, we'll, we'll write that down and, and make, see what we can do about it. <laughs> Sure, and to follow up, we've done some rain, rain, rainfall studies, and of course, we, we we're not probably sure we won't be able to defend against all harsh weather events, um, and that is a very, very good point that you're you're giving us today. We've got uh, another comment from uh, Catherine. Uh, Catherine says both station designs show clear glass windscreens. At each CBC, a goal is to improve environmental conditions. Um, this will attract birds. Clear glass means bird collisions. Uh, opaque glass, colored or fritted glass should be used. Um, she wants to know uh, if other cities do this, is it possible for us to do it as well? Matthew, you wanna take that or I can? Um, uh, I was just gonna say that the um, the windscreen area is a, uh one of the the art or the uh, community um, identity items so i think it's definitely uh, an option to to look in what we can can do there to customize it um, to, to make it work for uh, the communities and also to avoid bird collisions Let's see, it looks like we're nearing the end of uh, the questions in the chat. Um, if you guys have any other questions, be sure to get them into the Q&A so we can get them answered while we've got everybody here. Looks like one just came in. Um, question from Catherine, all aspects of station design need to actively engage with future riders who may be three to five years old with parents. Engaging with young riders now will ensure future riders. What aspects of the design are focused on engaging with the younger riders? I think that's a really great question. And these are the folks we really want to reach um, because they're the next gen and the folks are going to be using this the most. I think some of this will come in play with the communications technology that will be within the stations. Um, and as far as interaction, Certainly, we don't want the finest athlete three years climbing on our columns and jumping from one wall to the other. But um, I think the playful nature in general of these stations is engaging, it's inviting, and it's almost a fun place to be for your next gen. Um, and I hope that that is relaying in these imagery, images that we're showing you. Um, transit's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be a burden. Um, those are my thoughts. I'm sure you can add more there, Matthew. 
Vanessa, can you show yes. some of the designs and some of the pictures from the other systems and some of the, the graphics that they've used and, um, you know, so, yeah, some of those things, which I think would be very engaging to youth. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you know, he, he, here's, uh, again, a good one, just the backside of, of what you can see what's around you for GRTC. Um, this is the system, again, that we mentioned was in, in Richmond. Um, here, here's another great one that we talked about for uh, in, in the paving on, on, on the left side, uh, where, where they just kind of said, okay, you know, maybe you are here and, and you can see the map for everything that's surrounding them. Um, I, and I guess to, to, to move back on that, um, one of the examples that we moved is here to the right, um, where in, in pavement you can kind of, you know, again, this is just high level, but maybe we could have some wording. So as you're looking down, you can say, oh, you know, Holland Hills is here or in this direction. Oh, here's High Bull Valley. So, uh, you know, just elements along the quarter, but uh, that we, we could highlight and, and frankly connect. I feel uh, there are different spots. Again, we've talked about this having a plaza sculpture and how it can integrate into, again, on station features. Um, so, uh, and again, I guess I would go back to this uh, slide where we've highlighted seven areas that, that I think could be opportunities to do that engagement. I might also add that even on a paving system, much like where you're standing on the platform, can actually show you in modular form the chronology of history that, that is, presents itself in this region. There's lots of ways to, especially with artist input, to, to help us relate to the public and, and teach the public in a positive way what this, this is about. Uh, our next question comes from Alexis. Alexis would like to know if covered or secured bike parking um, is being considered as part of the station, the station design features. Well, uh, and I'm, I hope I can say this, but <laughs> we actually anticipating of, of bringing bikes on board. So we will, uh, our, our articulated buses, and you may want to talk about this maybe in, in December a little bit just to show you uh, some of those uh, buses that we actually have will have bike racks on board. But I guess if you're talking more off station, let's see if I can find a graphic, we are anticipating to have areas very close to those uh, far side areas of the station. Here's a good one um, where we, we would have either bike share stations, bike parking uh, stations, and um, going on, um, it would fit along this area to connect you as close as possible to the actual station if you didn't want to bring your bus, uh, I'm sorry, your bike on the bus. Thank you. Uh, next question comes from Adeline. Uh, she'd like to know if extra stoplights and crosswalks will be created once the canopies are built. Um, she says she lives in Roxbury by Goodwill and understands that a canopy will be built in the area. Uh, can you say only what what road what rock what crossroad Roxbury? Did you say? Yeah, she says she lives by Roxbury. Um, she wants to know if uh, extra stoplights and crosswalks are going to be are going to be created once the canopies are built. Okay. Uh, so, just so you guys know, along this corridor, there are thirty three signals, and, and one of the goals for our project as we go through this is to provide four legged crosswalks along this. So, I, I think if you go on the corridor today. That's not at all what it is, um, you know, sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three, but again, knowing that we have uh, all this new ridership coming along, we want to make sure that we can provide as many crossings, visible crossings as possible. Um, another feature <clears throat> that will be built as part of the system is to provide continuous sliding for the corridor. So that goes all the way from um, uh, on this northern part of the corridor to I think it's Jeff Todd way will we'll continue sliding as we all as you all know you're in the community, you know, that is not one not is that is not something that's there today. So adding these features um, is all to enhance pedestrian safety um, signals right now. We're not anticipating any new signals. Thank you, Vanessa. Next question. We're starting to fill up, so I gotta scroll down now. <laughs> <laughs> What's a good thing? You're doing good, Rashad. This is great. 
Uh, next question comes from uh, Jenna. Uh, Jenna says, out of curiosity, what is the extra platform? Sorry, your question just moved on me, Jenna. Uh, what is the extra platform length being used for if the bus aligns at the closest area of the platform to the intersection? If you are waiting for the BRT vehicle and using both doors, wouldn't the shelter be better served at the center? Do you need me to read the question again? No, I think I got it. And, and, and Laura and, and you guys might have to back me up. But what that was intentional. If you look at this, and I think we've said it, um, our, our canopies are 70 feet wide. And if you look at overall our platform list, length, it's 140. They have put that because in case we get additional ridership or, or in case, we, you know, we have one bus fill up and here comes another to kind of handle that demand. We wanted to make sure that if, if we needed to fit a second canopy for that reason that we could. So it, it's put towards the front on purpose. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, next question is, uh, what technology features, if any, will be provided, such as Wi-Fi, bus arrival info, et cetera? Yes, great question. Um, so we, we are looking uh, to provide a next bus or live arrival information. So um, let's see, I guess like Metro does that right, next bus coming or, or next bus left or, or et cetera. So we, we will have that features. Um, I know Connector, and I'm sure we will integrate this as part of our system is to show you also on your, excuse me, on your phone to make sure you, you have accessibility to kind of see how uh, we're on you know, the app, and I can't remember what the app is called. Um, uh, to give you a determination of that if in case you couldn't see that. Um, we are looking at other features, I guess. Um, that, uh, so maybe digital media or, or digital mapping alongside there. Um, and uh, Wi-Fi, that is in, in discussions. Uh, but, but for now, I can't. Uh, that's something, I guess, for now that, yes, we're looking at. Thanks, Vanessa. Uh, next question comes from Greg, whose question is a two-parter. Uh, first of which, uh, Greg would like to know um, what date we're asking for the survey to be submitted by. And I, Greg, that I can I can answer that, Greg. That, that I believe that's December fifteenth. Correct. Yes. And thank you. We should have put that on our <laughs> on on this uh, presentation. Maybe we'll update it. But yes, December fifteenth. Second part of the question um, relates to the windscreens for the design slide. He says, uh, on the actual slide, there are two pad looking devices. Can you explain what they are? On screen. He said on the windscreen design slide. Uh, maybe he means this one. Yeah, I believe those are lean, lean rails for someone to. Yeah, this, these things. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, just, you lean up against them and check out your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, it's another type of of sitting, right? If you don't want to sit here at a ninety degrees, you can kind of slip back at a. What it's, is that, like it's, a 60. it's not necessarily seat. It's really it's <laughs> to, to coin a phrase. It's probably not very eloquent, eloquent, but we call it a butt rail. <laughs> and you just kind of <laughs> you, want, you lean your body up against it, and it's much more comfortable than trying to sit on on a concrete, um, you know, coping here or it, and it keeps the the passengers away from the finishes of the screen, and it, it's just a comfortable place to lean back on and keeps you on your feet. So to that, Laura, I guess I'd add, um, we are looking at these. So if that's a feature you like, we'd like to hear that. If it's not, we'd also like to hear that. <laughs> but I guess this is what the Richmond City decided to do. It was also done for clearance. Um, these platforms that were in Richmond were very tight and very narrow, and we needed to make sure we had an ADA clearance for everybody. We needed to access the platform. In the case of the, B, the BRT for Richmond Highway, we've got more clearance, so the seating doesn't necessarily have to be reduced in depth for use. Thanks, Laura. 
All right, next question comes from uh, Catherine. Um, this one will be another two-parter, um, first of which uh, Catherine asks or says, uh, please consider a design that will accommodate the station name at multiple locations on the platform. Um, if only at the front of the bus, not everyone will see this. Um, what are we doing for the back of the bus? This um, is a great... Do you mean, go ahead, Laura, if you understand. I, 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 think, I think I understand what you mean. I think this is a really great question. And you're right, when you're on a moving vehicle, you will often miss the signage that tells you where you are. Um, and that can be very confusing for riders. And we use the same technique when you're on a train or any other type of transit. So it would have to be looked at how many times we do repeat the name. There are certain guidelines and criteria that um, designers have to follow in order to have a totally oriented passenger and understanding where they are. And that's in design and it under consideration right now. And it's a very good question. And then the second part, uh, our second question is, um, simply put, what about green roofs or solar panels? We all want that. I guess we <laughs> just kidding. <Okay. laughs> Um, those are uh, great things to consider. Having uh, sustainable technologies on stations is is always a preferred um, feature that we are not looking at those just yet. There are maintenance uh, issues that go with that. Uh, green rooms are always very exciting and, and always a possibility. I'm just not sure that that's in the vocabulary right now. We are trying to integrate green uh, green features with the landscaping rather than the roofing at this time. Um, and that's that's where we are at this time, but please make the suggestions and we'll see if we can put them in the design. Thank you. Wanda would like to know if there will be advanced communication so that people can comp uh, prepare for heavy traffic. And I'm not sure, uh, Wanda, do you, I guess, can you, could you clarify, do you mean like when construction begins? Unless one of you um, understand what she's getting at. Um, you may want to talk about the um, the signal priority to allow the buses to move up and down the corridor um, faster than the traffic. Uh, Wanda, sure. Wanda just got back to us. Uh, she's referring to when construction begins. Okay. Well, let's answer both of those because I think they're great. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, uh, when is, yeah, so we're, we're looking to extend their green time. So it's kind of like telling the signal, hey, hold up, let me get through the signal. Our platforms are, si are far sighted, so which means we would get through the signal to get to the station and then move on. So um, we're working with BDOT on that to make sure that we, we can uh, put that type of, uh, we call it tr transit signal priority in. Um, secondarily for construction, yes. Um, you know, we, we'll have part in our desk meetings, um, we understand this is, you know, not a residential and commercial corridor, so we want to make sure we have and send out reminders or notes as we continue to do construction, um, what what things are changing, whether it be weekly or monthly. Um, so we, we do have partners with our neighborhood and community services uh, agency to kind of give us those contact points. And again, we do have a list of HOAs and civic associations that we can continue to, to kind of uh, send out emails and and blots um, as far as like what's happening, what the changes are um, as we continue through the project when construction um, happens. Thanks, Vanessa. Uh, next question comes from Jim. Um, Jim wants to know if there are going to be barriers to guide pedestrians um, when they're crossing the area on both sides. Uh, Jim is concerned about people wanting to jaywalk to try to catch their bus. Oh, sorry, I was trying to change my slide. Um, trying to see. Well, one one thing we'll try to move on or use is uh, landscaping. Um, you know, maybe not that an in intersections, but in between these signals, um, no, this doesn't really do a job. But the the green areas you see here, right? Um, the, those will be there for trees to kind of block view. 
I think in between back here too, you know, um, it, again, it's it's not ideal. I don't know that we want to put specific barriers up um, since we do want this to, you know, again, not mid block, but we would do want them to people to be invited and, and use the, the crosswalks um, to get to our stations. Um, I guess I would mention that one of the things we're trying to enhance and use is within the median areas uh, to have stormwater uh, retention. So I, I think as we continue to move on, people will see that they just don't want to cross at any other location but at the crosswalks uh, because of those type of maybe wet or, or, yeah, I guess wet conditions that we'll be applying. Um, but as far as like putting in specific fencing or guardrail, that's not something we're anticipating. Vanessa, can you show the back view of the station from the back side to show that it's really not going to be easy for people to jaywalk to to kind of yeah, there you go. Um, it'll be easier for them to use yeah. the crosswalk. Right, we do have a wall with the railing on top, so um, right, it goes all the way through. So exactly, you, you want to be you want to come join us on the station, but by using the crosswalk. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, we have reached bottom of the barrel for our Q and A questions. Um, make sure you guys hit us up in the chat if you guys have more questions. Um, our next one comes from Chris. Chris wants to know if it is our intention to place a bus station inside of Fort Belvoir. Um, and I know not the best map, but no, as you guys know, Fort Belvoir is a secure facility and uh, we want to make sure, you know, at this point, really, you should probably have credentials to get on the fort. But um, and again, not the best picture, but this, the station is actually on the side. So if you know that area um, where I'm kind of hovering over, that's supposed to be Belvoir Road. And the station, I guess, would be lateral offset on the on the uh, Fort Belvoir side. Um, for people to, to access from there, there's a, a shuttle system that we're anticipating to take people on the fort, or it, it would be a short distance to walk on if you're going through the secure gates. As of right now, Vanessa, that was the final question in the Q&A. No, thank you, Rashad. I, I guess um, we'll, we'll go back to this um, a, a reminder about the survey that it only takes two or three maximum minutes um, are, are right now as we speak or if it's not already done. Um, all this information as far as just taking the survey, some of our graphics, our videos can be found on our website. Um, we encourage you to share this information, get other your neighbors. Uh, your community members, anybody who lives on the corridor or who works there, who drives by there to kind of just give us an input on um, all the concepts and some of the information you've seen tonight. Again, uh, the survey is up. It's, it'll be open until December 15th. Um, and if you don't want to take the survey, which I hope you will, um, you can always email us or send us comments and we are happy to send you a survey or email you back the link directly to the survey. Um, those are some ways to get in contact if you have other general questions on anything about the uh, the project. Uh, the three ways again are going back to our website at fairfaxcounty.gov and then just putting in Richmond Highway BRT as the keywords um, directly to our project team at dotbrt at fairfaxcounty.gov and then again um, sending us uh, comments or questions directly by mail. So did that spurt, did that get us any more comments or questions or thoughts? Sometimes that does. <laughs> nope, we're still gonna mine. Well, um, we'll give everybody a, a couple more minutes in case there are more questions. Um, we, I guess we got I'll, a I'll go back. Jim. Okay. <laughs> Well, again, a reminder on, on specifically what we want to hear about on the survey. Um, again, we've shared two concepts with you tonight. Um, we want to know what you like, what you don't like. We've had some great comments and things that we should consider. Those are also, there'll, there'll be a chance on the survey for you to add that. 
um, what we're calling our neighborhood charm for these elements for the line stations. So, you know, we want to know what should be reflected in the design that's specific to all these neighborhoods, um, community, history, culture, amenities, uh, those types of things that we want to see highlighted. Um, that's what we want to hear about. And I guess uh, another plug uh, for our December meeting, um, it, it won't be a specific topic, but really what we're calling the year end review uh, for everything that's been going on on Richmond Highway. Give an opportunity to have not only us on FCDOT on the line, but uh, Regina Department of Transportation and some of our uh, sister agencies with some of those efforts. It's going to be a great opportunity uh, for anybody and, and or who wants to know about any of these other things going on along the, uh, the highway or Richmond Highway, sorry, to kind of, again, ask questions and just to, to kind of a one stop shop um, so we can all be on the line. I think that's the first time we've done it. And, couple of years if at all. Um, and again, that, that information, it, the, the meetings are set, it will be December 8th in English, December 9th in Spanish at the same start time, 7 p.m. Um, and as, as we get closer to that time, we do have links on our website to kind of register you. All right, Rashad, I think um, we have anybody else asking any late questions? Nope, we're good in the chat. All right. Well, um, I'm going to end with again thanking everybody for their time and their questions tonight. Um, please, please share this information um, with your neighbors. Again, our contact information here is on the left. And uh, thank you for your input and your future input and your time tonight.